What's up, everybody? Well, I had a request to do Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Demo at 4K by two people. One just wanted to see what it ran like at the 4K or at the high preset at 4K, and then someone else just wanted to see it run at 4K. So I figured we'll just run through all the settings, make both of them happy, and then do my settings at the end like usual, though. I don't know if I, any way I'm going to get 60 on this, even with FSR. We'll see. But usually 4K is not this thing's forte with newer games. But hey, it might surprise me. It was running really smooth, and it's not a super intensive FPS kind of game where you're like jumping all around like a crooking lunatic, like 10,000 people shooting at you. It's just kind of like, all right, kind of slowish moving zombies come at you and you have to shoot them in the face. So not exactly necessary to have lots of FPS. I'd still like 60, but I could feel like a lot of people would not care if it couldn't hit 60 all the time. As long as it probably stays over 30, I feel like most people are happy. Everybody's different. I like to still stay above 60, so we'll see what we can do. But in any case, I'm gonna try to use super resolution to get some screen recorded gameplay and then get camera gameplay at the end but we might have to just do all camera gameplay because I don't know if that's going to work and I already know it's going to be take way too many FPS away using OBS at 4K. It always did. It always made it look like unplayable and then you get to the camera recorded section. It's like, oh, it's actually not as bad as it seems at all. It takes sometimes up to 20 FPS with the settings I've got. So, so I'm hoping the capture computer idea will work. It works for 1440, so hopefully it works for 4K. We'll just have to wait and see. So let's go hop into the game, shall we? Well, all right. It seems as though I can do 4K with the super resolution so we're gonna start off on recommended settings and the presets and then we'll just work down the list after this obviously we're gonna go jump into the game but I mean after we're done with this particular setting we're just gonna keep going down the list of the presets but all right, let's go hop into the game now, shall we? Well, here we go with the recommended settings. And since we're using the capture computer, this shit is not going to affect the FPS at all. Glad I figured out this super resolution trick. But it seems like we're going to get around a 30-ish FPS experience here. But for a game like this, honestly, that's probably fine for most people if you want to do native 4K with this kind of thing. Me, I'd like a little bit more personally, but I know a lot of people could play this and say this is probably completely playable. Besides, I've played plenty of games at 30 FPS with a controller on my Steam Deck, but gone. me, I'd rather just tone down the resolution and get a little bit more FPS. It seemed to do really good at 1080p and pretty decent at 1440p. Had to work a little bit harder with my settings in that one. Well, there's that dead deer we always look at. It's just part of the little benchmark run that I've made for myself here. Gotta go through the thistles and random trees. I'm very impressed with the frame times in this game, though. It's a very smooth game. Like, this feels smoother than lots of the newer games do at higher FPS. Frame times are important. Frame times and 1% lows. Those are what basically people perceive as stutter. And I've been playing a lot of Hogwarts, and that game's a stutter fest still. Not the worst offender, but still not great either. Especially if you turn ray tracing on, it's still pretty much unplayable. Anyway, though, why don't we now hop on to the next preset? Now we're going to do the prioritize performance preset. So let's just look at the settings here real quick before we hop into the game, just to see what it all changed in this particular preset. Seems like we got FSR on performance for this. But, of course, I'll do just FSR at the very end. I'll probably just pick one of the random set of presets to do it with. Anyway, that is the bottom, so now let's go see how prioritized performance goes. Well, here we go, prioritized performance, and this is honestly probably the only way you're going to get a super high FPS experience, but keep in mind this is no longer anywhere close to being at native 4K anymore. And lots of stuff is on low, so it doesn't particularly look great on a 4K TV. And I'm not, like, sitting right up next to it either. I'm pretty far back. 
I'm even I'm behind where my camera would be sitting. Just kind of standing, what should we call it? When I would be doing the camera part, and I was going to say, I've tested the FSR part already, and it does not look very good. This is all on capture computer. So I'm just sitting in a chair playing. But yeah, whenever I do my settings, I basically just sit there and change each, each individual setting and see how much FPS hit each one takes. And in this game, you can get a lot more by doing ray tracing off. And even though I turned it on my settings, I just figured it add a little bit to the game. It seemed to really help the lighting effects out. But it was still 8 to 10 FPS drop, so if people are more concerned with the FPS, just turn that right off and boom, you're getting a lot more FPS. But alrighty, we're basically at the stopping point for our little walking around benchmark here, so let's go on to the next preset. Now for the balanced preset, but before we get into the game, of course, we're going to look through all the settings here. And there's quite a lot of settings, and I love the way they do this game. You've got a thing that gives you examples of what each setting does, what e how much load each thing does, and how much quality you get, how much RAM you're expected to use, or VRAM you're expected to use. This is very nice. More games could be like this, and that would be just fine. But anyway, we have reached the bottom, so back into the game we go. Well, now, here we go. Balanced preset. And we seem to be very similar to the recommended preset. Though it does seem like we might be getting, like, 2 to 3 FPS more in certain areas. But... That might just be a placebo. It's kind of looking very similar, like it's almost exactly the same. There's probably one or two settings that are that differentiate the two. And they're not enough to really give you too much FPS. Except maybe in certain areas, but it could also just be, hey, the GPU is at a different clock in this area going down here, and then that could be worth one FPS. You never know. Ugh. Let's go check out our dead deer, our dead carcass. All right, now back up to our little house area. Of course, we gotta go through all these fucking branches first. This would suck. And then if you aren't paying attention, bam, your head is right into a bunch of barbed wire, rusty barbed wire at that. That would not be a fun day, especially if it got you in the eyes. Well, all right, we have reached the stopping point. So now let's go on to the next preset. Now it's time for the priori prioritize graphics preset. So let's scroll through these settings real quick. And all right, now it's time to get into the game. Time for prioritize graphics. And yep, now we're getting 33, 34, 35. So kind of very similar to recommended and balanced. A few FPS less, don't get me wrong, like probably two or three, but seems very similar. Because I think around here we were getting like 35, 36. And when we went and looked at this place, yeah, we were getting 40, 41. So we're definitely dropped a, definitely a couple FPS here and there. But it seems like we're still just barely able to stay over 30 FPS. 
How far could he have gone? Doesn't mean you will throughout the entire game, obviously, since we just hit exactly 30 right there. There could be some instances where we drop under, but still, getting pretty decent frame times considering we're at 30 FPS. They're not juddering all over the place, so 30 FPS as long as you're using a controller doesn't feel that bad. Don't get me wrong, of course, me. I prefer 60 plus all day, every day, but I can still make do. Now that I got a Steam Deck, I've definitely learned to make do with 30 and 40 very, very often. It's not very often I can hit 60 in very many games. And if you do that, then you get terrible FP or terrible battery life usually anyway. Certain games, though, I just have to. Like that Vampire Survivors game, I can't stand that game at 30 or 40. I tried that when we had another power outage, and I was like, nope, can't do it. It still lasts like four and a half, five hours anyway. So, who cares? It lasts almost as long as it does watching videos, just playing a game like that, you know? So that's plenty. And then I could always just plug it into my power bank. But all right, we've reached the end here. So now let's go on to the next preset. Now time for the ray tracing preset. So again, let's go look real quick through these settings. And then we'll hop into the game. So many settings to go through, but I like it. I like having lots of options. But anyway, that's the bottom, so to the game. Let's do some ray tracing preset now. So let's just walk around. I'm actually surprised we're still so far staying above 30 FPS. So far though, in the ray tracing in any of these Resident Evil games I've tried, it hasn't really affected it by as much as it does in a lot of other games. It must only be like reflections or shadows or something like that, or maybe lights. If it's just one thing, it's not too bad. But it's when you try to make it do all of them. Like if it's like Cyberpunk, for example. It's like, okay, well, you want 12, 17 FPS? Well, there you go. And that's oh, where this Mark, thing falls flat on its face. But it seems like times like this, if you're right with 30-ish FPS, you can even turn on ray tracing at 4K. Because I don't think this turned on FSR yet. The only one that did was prioritize graphics. Oop, we almost forgot to check out our dead deer. Here we go. Gotta do that every time. It's part of the benchmark. Ugh. A gross part of the benchmark, but part of the benchmark nonetheless. And this is just the demo. Who knows? The... When the game comes out, this might be a lot better. I'll probably get the game. Well, almost definitely get the game. I like these games. I may not be the best at them, but I'm not the best at Elden Ring or Wulong or any of those games, and I still enjoy those. And I beat Elden Ring and Wulong. Now I really want to try Serico. But I got a bunch of other new games to play. I've been playing a lot of Hogwarts lately. Game may be a sturdy mess, but it's really, really fun. And it looks really good. Anyway, that is the end. So now let's go move on to the last preset, I do believe. So now this is just the max preset. So let's look over the settings real quick. So it turns ray tracing up to high. We have no FSR or anything like that. So let's just scroll through and see what it does. It should literally have maxed everything. It would kind of irritate me if everything was not maxed. And it looks like it is. All right, let's go jump into the game now. Here we go now with the preset maxed. So let's walk around. Yeah. It looks like we're not able to quite hit 30 all the time anymore. Well, I was kind of expecting that. This is 4K after all. We're maxing the game out, but we're still at 30-ish. But still not staying above that 30 FPS I like to stay. So I would probably not play like this. But hey, probably a bunch of people that this is still completely playable for. That's why I'm glad I'm going through all the settings. How far could he have gone? Oh. 
All right, now let's keep on walking on up here. We're using 11 gigs of memory. So it wasn't lying when it said it used pretty much all my RAM. Or VRAM, rather. We've got 12.2 gigs of it. And there's probably stuff in the background, even though I don't have anything up besides this game, using a little bit of it. Like Windows and what have you, so. But we should still have enough to just do this game. I don't feel like it's like having to cache it onto the hard drive or anything. I feel like we'd be getting even worse FPS, and we'd definitely be getting some stutters if that were the case. But pretty good FPS so far, considering what we're trying to do. Maxing this out at 4K. Anyway, though, now let's go move on to FSR. Now it is time to do FSR. We're going to start off with quality, and we're doing FSR 2. And I'm using the preset ray tracing. So let's just keep scrolling down here real quick. Shadow quality on high, all that stuff. Some stuff is on mid. All right, though, that is the bottom. So let's go see how it does with some FSR. Well, here we go. FSR quality with the preset ray tracing. And we're just gonna leave the preset ray tracing on for the, all the FSR tests just so we don't invalidate anything. I want to leave it on the same settings every time. At least until we get to my settings at the very end. Well, this is definitely a lot more playable now, but keep in mind, as soon as you turn anything like DLSS on or FSR or anything like that on, you are no longer at 4K. I don't know what exact oh resolution we're on, but definitely not 4K. Quality is probably somewhere around, like, a little over 1440p, or right around 1440p. Balanced is probably in between 1080p and the two. I think performance in this case would be 1080p, and ultra performance is probably 720p. I could have that wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw in another game I played that that's how it treated it. And unless it treats different games differently, I think that's just kind of the same resolutions when you're at 4K for FSR 2. Still not hitting our magical 60 that I like, but still a lot better than 30. I think we got like 34 to like 38 with the ray tracing preset without any FSR. So it's definitely helping quite a bit. But with that... That is the end of our little benchmark there, so let's go on and drop it down to balanced FSR now. So now we got FSR on balanced, it's FSR 2, and we're leaving the preset on ray tracing, just to keep everything all good and the same. All we're changing is the different FSRs, dropping it down from the highest one all the way down to ultra performance, but now we are on balanced, so let's just keep scrolling down and scrolling down. And all right, now let's go in and see how balance does. So now we got balanced FSR now, and we got the preset of ray tracing on still. And honestly, it seems to be very similar. We might have gained like two, three FPS possibly, but it looks very, very similar to quality as far as FPS is concerned. far could he have gone? Apparently from from wherever till tomorrow.
Yeah, it seems very, very similar to quality. I've basically just been staring at the FPS, and it looks extremely similar. Anyway, though, now let's go drop it down to performance, FSR. That one should definitely make a difference. Well, now it is time for FSR performance. Again, FSR 2. We're not doing the uh, FSR 1. That's also an option. But why use 1 if you can use 2? I believe 2 is pretty much superior in everything besides... I believe FSR 1.0 gets more FPS, but it looks like Super Vaseline mode. So, I prefer 2. That's just me. But we're still on the preset of ray tracing as well. Don't want to change that now. We'll keep that the same until we get to my settings. And I still might leave it on, but I doubt it. I don't think we can afford to have ray tracing on at 4K, even with FSR. Anyway, let's move on. Well, all right, here we go with some FSR performance. So let's go back up to our little truck here and start where we did with the rest of the stuff. There we go. Still not quite able to hit 60 FPS. Probably due to the ray tracing. It's probably just not going to happen no matter what. Even if we use FSR. And if that's the case, we'll just turn it off for my settings. Yep, he probably does not like that smell. That's probably a pretty pungent smell. Well, all right. Well, it definitely made a difference, but we're still not able to hit 60 the whole time. And I can still tell quite a difference in that graphic quality. Things look a lot softer. There's a little bit more aliasing, but whatever. Let's now move on to the next FSR. Now it is time for FSR 2 Ultra Performance. So we're still also on the preset of ray tracing. That's what we've been on all the time for all of these particular FSR fiascos that we've been on. Trying to get that magical 60 FPS the whole time. Now this one might do it, but we're gonna be at 720p and it's gonna probably look like absolute garbage. Even though it says we're 4K, we're using ultra performance, which definitely drops the resolution down. Well, all right, here we go with FSR 2 ultra performance. And we still got the ray tracing preset on and yeah, it kind of looks like we're playing on the Steam Deck, only with way better FPS and everything, but this is kind of the Steam Deck resolution. It looks a little better than that, though, because FSR definitely works some magic to make it look better than just toning it down to 720p, obviously. But that is the resolution of a Steam Deck. Well, it's, uh, I think, 1280 by 800, because it's 16 by 10, not 16 by 9. But that's pretty much a 16 by 10 ratio, or aspect ratio version of 720p. Some people call it 800p. And then I also noticed something. Apparently, somehow I did not record my settings for my settings. I see the actual recording of the gameplay, but I don't see the recording of the settings, and that's a pretty important part of my settings, so I'm going to have to go and real quickly go in the other room before I... or after I'm done with this particular little recording and go and grab that real quick because that's a very important part I'll just record it with OBS real quick I don't think it's necessary to go and hook this thing up to the capture computer just for that it's not something where FPS matters whatsoever it's just a settings screen but again since I noticed it before we got to editing why not go and actually make the video right instead of just going up oh, well can't do anything about it it's one thing if it gets corrupted and I'm in the middle of you know, editing, and there's really no way to go fix it unless I go set everything back up in the middle of the night, and who wants to do that? But 
Well, all right, though. We've pretty much gotten to our stopping part of where we walk around, so now I'm going to have to go get that recording real quick and then get do the voiceover on that. So, obviously, you guys aren't going to have to stick around for that. So, let's move on. Well, all right, here are my settings. I had to go back and re-record these. Somehow, I did not get the recording of these, and that's a pretty important part of my settings. If I don't show you my settings, what in the hell is the point, <laughs> you know? All you do is look at a screen and go, oh, well, that's nice. I wonder what his settings are. <laughs> so here we are. We'll just scroll down to the bottom, and then we'll get into the game. And there we are. That is the bottom. So to the game we go. Well, all right, guys, let's take a quick look at my settings here, my gameplay of my settings, I should say. And we still can't quite hit 60 all of the time, but we stay pretty close. It's kind of very similar to how my settings were in 1080p and 1440p. Only this time we couldn't have ray tracing on. That's okay. Gotta make some sacrifices if you want to get close to doing 4K, but we're on balanced FSR, so we're not really doing 4K. We're in between 1080p and 1440p, I'm pretty sure. But had to do that to get what I would consider more playable FPS. With the game still looking halfway decent. How far could he have gone? I didn't want to have to use, like, performance FSR or tone the settings down to, like, that prioritized graphics shit. It did not make the game look very good. <sighs> but this is the cool part about computers. You can sit here and fill with the settings and still get a pretty damn acceptable <sighs> frame rate. And the frame times in this game are great, so it does not even really seem laggy or stuttery or anything like that. It's very nice. And this is just a demo, so the real game should only be better than this or the same. All right, we'll just walk up here, around our house like we usually do. All right, and with that, let's just go park ourselves right in the center here. And that about wraps it up for the camera rec or screen recorded portion so now it's time to move on to my settings camera recorded so let's go hop on to the camera well, all right guys we're going to attempt to get some camera recorded gameplay but it might fall into the same problem as my uh asus g50 advantage did at 1080p where it was just all blurry and impossible to see but no that seems like it's okay doesn't seem to be going blur city on the viewfinder here Luckily, I was paying attention, otherwise I would have gotten done, wasted a bunch of time, and been like, well, shit, we can't even see anything. What the hell? It's still hard to see. Hell, it's hard for me to even see this live. Oh, see, that made it, that made it blur for a second. But as long as it's not going to do that constantly, no matter what, we're good. It's going to just be a constant blur. We're not going to be so good. All right, here's that dead-ass animal. All right, this part might be a little blurry and hard to see because there's, like, literally no light. We got to crouch to get under this shit. We'll just do our normal little thing where we walk around the house, but then this time, since we're doing camera gameplay, we'll go in the house, too. Fuck it. But as you can see, unfortunately, even with my settings, I can't stay above 60 all the time. Close, but still drops under 60. It was either make the game look like crap, either with low settings, or by going into performance FSR, which I believe even the prioritized for uh, performance turned that on by default with like no ray tracing or anything like that. Anyway, let's go into the house now. Judgment is not, apparently. Eh, 
All right, well, I guess let's go talk to the creepy old man who tries to kill us. Since we already know we can't get through that locked door. And of course, my settings are using FSR, so this isn't really 4K anymore, but it is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do to get playable FPS. If you guys are okay with being under 60 FPS, you can always turn that stuff off and just go native. But it just won't get anywhere close to 60 anymore. Even mine, as you saw, doesn't get 60. You know a key? Love how smooth the frame times are in this game, though. It honestly makes this game getting like even under 60 FPS seem a lot smoother than a lot of the games that have been coming out lately. Oh, that's just that again. Ah, still. Got a fucking half gutted bunny. We've got our fucking shit stew here. At least that's what it looks like to me. Anyway, though, now let's go and go into the basement. And it seems to have a little trouble focusing when there's no light at all. Hey. Uh, nope. He is, uh, quite done, I assure you. I read you. What's your situation? Fuck out of here. What was that? No fucking way. Alright. This just keeps getting worse. We got rid of him. Managed to not let him hit me. Wasted a bunch of ammo, but it's okay. We'll deal with that later. Under one. Hunnigan here. What's your sit rep? The president's daughter, Baby Eagle. It's likely she's in this village. Our intel was correct then. Well done. Hell yeah, go in to shot a nearby lake. She may have been taken there. Copy that. I'll see what I can find. Oh, hurry up. Something's happened to the people here. My escorts are. <laughs> Yep, gotta go. People can't kill me next. Blow myself up.
Well, alright. I would say that is plenty of camera gameplay, so why don't we go and wrap this video on up now? Well, alright guys, that is a wrap for Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Demo at 4K, and it was quite a struggle to get 60 FPS without either making the game look like shit either with FSR or running on performance mode and the presets, which also I think turns on performance FSR. But I think my settings with balanced FSR got us pretty close, and at least with the frame times in this game, even when we drop under 60, it really doesn't seem that laggy or terrible or anything like that. At least not to me using a controller. It'd probably feel different if I was using a mouse but these kind of games were always with controllers so I figured well it's easier for me to do without hunching over around a camera and stuff when it comes to the camera recorded portion anyway so I figured might as well just stick with the controller the whole time you know otherwise it's like all right can do kind of good here oh now I gotta use controller now I'm trash might as well just be equally trash the whole time as far as I'm concerned but anyway hopefully that'll be uh what they wanted I went through all the settings possible we even went through the rate we went through all the presets we did FSR and the presets included both ray tracing so I didn't bother doing a complete section for that but anyway, yeah, I think that it's pretty damn playable, even at 4K. Well, close, as long as you use some FSR. It can do 4K as long as you're okay with getting around 30-ish FPS. It seems to get around 33 to 38, just pretty much when you prioritize graphics. Now, when you max it out, you do drop under 30, as you guys saw. But hey, that's what happens. This thing's never was said that it was supposed to be a 60 FPS plus 4K machine. It just happens to still be able to do a little tiny 4K here and there. And pretty much rule of thumb, if a PlayStation 5 can do something, this thing should be able to do it just as good or better. So, in any case, that's all we got for this particular video. I sure hope you guys enjoyed the video, because I sure as hell enjoyed making it for you guys. And until the next video, peace out, guys. Marty, I'm bored. I'm, I'm gonna kill you. No! <laughs>